Hey, all, and welcome to the first lesson of the year. Uh, we're going to do a little introduction to statistics. Before we get started, I always want to encourage you to pause the lesson if you're trying to write something down so that you can uh, write the things down and then listen without being distracted. I also want to encourage you to rewind if you missed anything. Always ask for help if you have help in the middle of a lesson. Don't wait till it's too late. I'm happy to help. Take your time with these and good luck. So in statistics, what we are trying to do is we are trying to collect information. We're trying to process that information, and then we are trying to make predictions or inferences or generalize to an entire group of individuals. And so the what we are finding looking for is called a variable. So we're always trying to collect information, try to figure something out. Maybe we're trying to figure out um, something about the height of high school students, or maybe we're trying to figure out the in the average income of a individual in Prince William County. And so that is our what. The who is uh, also very important. We always want to know what it is we're trying to find out about, but we also want to know who we are trying to find that thing out about. And who doesn't always mean people? Um, in a lot of cases, it does. But we can sample machines, vehicles, animals. Uh, we can sample cereal boxes. So who doesn't always refer to a human? Um, but a lot of times it does. And so usually we are trying to find out about a large group and that large group we call a population. Population is usually very large. And because a population typically, not always, but typically is very large, it's very hard to find out um, that piece of information, that variable, that thing of interest, the what, it's very hard to find that out about everybody in the entire population. And so what we end up doing is we take samples. And that is a smaller representative group. So from our population, we use appropriate methods, which we'll talk about, and we sample. And that is a smaller group from our population. It needs to be representative of our population, means that um, every type of different characteristic that might be important needs to be represented. Um, and then we can use that information to now start making some predictions or drawing some conclusions about our larger group, the population. So for looking at this example here from Consumer Reports, we have 25 tablets from a variety of manufacturers. That 25 tablets represents our sample. It's a small group. It's from a variety of manufacturers, so hopefully it's representative of all tablets. And all tablets would be what we are calling the population. So we're trying to find something about uh, all tablets out on the market. We've sampled 25 from different manufacturers, and then we can process our information and hopefully draw some conclusions. What I'd like you to do right now would be to pause, pause to read this. Don't let this video keep playing while you're trying to read this. So pause the video, read this about uh, the psychologist Ian Walker, and then we will talk about the population and what is the sample. So there's a lot of information in here about um, what this psychologist was doing, trying to determine the driving behaviors um, by bicycle riders. 
so there's a lot of stuff we can pick out of here, but what we want to know is what was our population we are interested about, and then what was the sample taken in order to um, draw a conclusion about the population. Again, we're not usually going to be able to reach an entire population. So if we are documenting how many cars we watched pass by us, that 2,500 cars passing him is the sample that he took. And now we're uh, watching these 2,500 cars on a certain uh, roadway. Um, it doesn't look like maybe he went to different roads. So the population of interest here, we want to be careful. We want to be specific, uh, maybe driving habits in different types of roads, like a highway or maybe like uh, a residential area are different. So maybe you're more cautious when you're in a residential area um, because you know there might be kids around or things like that. So the population here would most likely be all motorists or all drivers on this road. So we are looking at 2,500 cars that drove by him wearing a helmet or not wearing a helmet. And that is our sample. And we are trying to draw some conclusion about these behaviors based on this sample of 2,500 cars. So again, I want you to pause here, pause this, read this scenario about the coffee stations, and then see if you can pick out the population and the sample, and then press play, and I will discuss what, what is the sample and what is the population. So here we are trying to find something out about the uh, contributions based on the picture that was near the coffee station, and we are at this... Uh, university, I would guess in England, Newcastle University. And so they, they put one picture up for a week and another picture or poster up for another week. And so the sample here would be uh, everybody who bought coffee. So we'll say maybe coffee drinkers for those two weeks. So our sample was all of the people who drank coffee in those two weeks. And what we're trying to do is infer something about all of the coffee drinkers Um, probably that would use this type of coffee station. So again, those two weeks might not have collected every possible person that would use that coffee station or coffee stations like that at this university. And so we have that two week sample to try and draw some conclusion about how people would use those coffee stations and how they would, uh, leave money uh, in general. So I mentioned at the beginning that the variable, the thing that the thing that we are looking to find out about, that is our what, what it is we are trying to find. We just talked about the two possibilities for who we are trying to find about. And so there are two different types of variables, two different types of what's that we will find out about. We have categorical variables and quantitative variables. Categorical variables are pretty appropriately named. Um, they're unit lists. And they can be put into categories. Um, one of the easiest examples that uh, you might connect to is your uh, level in high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Those are categories. 
can place people into those categories. There are no units. That is a categorical variable. If we want to know what, uh, I guess, grade level you're in, that's a categorical variable. Quantitative variables will have units. They can be measured. So if we're looking back at this 25 tablets, they're now collecting uh, information on the certain variables about these tablets, um, who made them, how much they cost, how long the battery lasts, what operating system do they run on, and their overall performance. And so these are different types of variables. And so what I'm going to do is underline categorical in red. And we'll go quantitative in this lighter blue. And so my quantitative variables first, I'll go with that since I got the blue pen, is are the variables that we can apply a unit of measure to. And so if I'm looking at these things that have a unit of measure cost, that will be in something like dollars or pounds, depending on what country we're in. Battery life is something that we can measure and we it gives us the unit or the units right there, hours. And then I would say an overall performance score. The units might be points. That is also a quantitative variable. So that leaves us our other ones as categorical. Variables where we can put them into categories. We can put them into category by manufacturer and by operating system. And for those of you who don't know, RIM, that is the operating system that Blackberries used to run on. And I apologize if there's any lagging here. My operating system is running a little slow. So I want you to go ahead and pause here, read this about sandwiches. Um, see if you can decide which variables are categorical, which ones are quantitative, and then press play and I'll go over the answers. So I'm going to go ahead and use my red again for my categorical variables. And so we're here talking about the sandwiches sold at Arby's. And the type of meat in the sandwich is going to be categorical. We can put those into categories, ham, turkey, roast beef. Uh, I don't know what else they sell. Uh, that looks like the only categorical variable. It looks like the other ones are quantitative if I didn't miss any the number of calories that's something we measure in calories serving size in ounces it gives us a a unit right there in ounces and so those two are quantitative the way that we display categorical and quantitative variables is different the way that we analyze them is going to be different the way that we draw inferences from them is going to be a little different. And so it's very important to be able to determine, are we talking about a categorical variable here or a quantitative variable so that we can use the correct procedures? I'll have you try one more of these, and then I think that will be the end of this uh, lesson today. Make sure if you do have questions as you're going through this, that you do please ask for help. Um, it's my pleasure to, to help, and I don't want you to get too far into this uh, without getting unstuck if you're stuck. So pause here, read this one, and uh, decide which variables are categorical and which variables are quantitative. So here we are looking at some medical data from 882 births. And so I will use my blue for quantitative one more time. Again, we're looking for things with units. And so the mother's age would be quantitative in years, um, number of weeks, 
would be quantitative. Uh, birth weight. I don't, if I didn't miss any, I, the rest are categorical. So the type of birth, the way mom gave birth would be categorical. The level of prenatal care, that means uh, care before birth, um, the gender of the baby, sex of the baby, and then if there were any sort of health problems, you can see we've even listed some of the categories, none, minor, or major. So all the uh, variables that we can put um, each of the babies into categories, but not necessarily measuring anything with any sort of units. So we are going to be collecting information on these types of variables throughout the year. We're going to be displaying them. And then we are going to be uh, analyzing them and drawing conclusions, making inferences um, from samples to populations for both categorical and quantitative variables. Again, if you had any questions, please do ask before you finish up. If not, uh, we can talk about them in class if you get stuck from there.